What kind of holster should you get? In part, this is a pretty personal question, and it's going to vary from person to person, but there are some general truths that you figure out as time goes on. And right here I have an array of just one of each kind of holster I've kind of jumped to over the years. And they are in ascending order. I'm going to tell you guys why I like each one and why I don't like each one. And it might help you not spend so much money on holsters because there's a lot of money on the table right here. And these aren't even all the holsters I have. Let's start with my very first holster. And this is a Milt Sparks. Beautiful leather, horse hide, shark skin accents. The holster had like a waiting time of something like six months or something. It was for an Ed Brown, let's see if, it was for an Ed Brown 1911 commander size and uh, awesome gun I carried it for a while so these are pretty cool holsters because they're generally kind of comfortable they are for three four o'clock carry uh, they spread the weight and the reason why I ended up going away from this is because of this so any holster and I didn't really figure this out for a while. <laughs> As you can see we have some other soft sided holsters but there's an evolution here. So if your holster does this that is no bueno. Uh, it's going to hinder you reholstering your gun and it's gonna end up making you flag yourself. You have to angle the gun like this in order to get it in because this is closing the gap. There's really no way around that when you do have a holster that has a soft side like this. This doesn't really squish that much. You never want a holster where the gap can actually close. Uh, this should never be able to close no matter what holster you have. But like I said if it's leather and it can do this you're still gonna end up muzzling yourself. You're not gonna get a clean reholster. I actually went from that and I came over here and I had a gun in this for a while and something like this is pretty good because it cannot fold over this doesn't close very much it has a little bit of give but it's generally going to keep the same form of the gun um, Kydex is pretty sweet it is spread out and I originally thought that something like this being spread out would lessen the amount of um, pressure points on my side and stuff. So I was like, oh, that's cool. It's all spread out. That'll be wicked comfortable. And what you end up finding out is, uh, eventually, <laughs> that something that's spread out like this just takes up a lot of room on your belt. And it becomes just annoying because it's so big. It doesn't need to be this big and it really doesn't reduce the amount of pressure points because something like this that's so specifically um, fitted to the gun I mean you can literally see all the marks of the rail it's for an HK 45 you can literally see the HK 45 like it's there <laughs> so it's that ends up not being very comfortable so that's why I ended up being like oh this isn't comfortable, I need to find something that's more comfortable and spread out, and then it will be good to carry. So, come over to this. Look, it's nice and spread out. This is soft, so it's going to be comfortable. And I have Kydex, so it's not going to bend in. But is it? <laughs> there you go, that's all you really need to see right here. Right there. See all that brown leather? and the rest of it's black, that's because the gun is constantly hitting this lip because as soon as you take the gun out it does this. It presses way in and the lip closes. Closes a lot. Half of it's Kydex, half of it's this horsehide leather. No bueno. 
and it, it's never gonna be comfortable because it's too friggin' big. But I was like, oh, this thing is squishing in. I don't like that. So I need something more rigid that won't do this, but I'm still in the whole mindset that like big and wide is going to be more comfortable. So out comes Alien Gear. As you can see, we're still rocking an HK45. And this has metal in it, so it doesn't bend quite as easily. And it has a longer sweat guard, so I was like, oh, that's cool. And it has like neoprene on the back, so I was like, that must be like super comfortable, man. So I buy this thing, and it works okay, but still, when you unholster, will bend over like that. So you still end up having to push this back. And then what you get into is I finally realized that I just need to go Kydex, straight Kydex, because a smaller profile is going to be more comfortable than these huge things taking up so Look at that. These, these things are like six, seven, eight inches across. That's your whole entire side, guys. This is so uncomfortable and annoying to carry when you have something as wide as these things are. You're gonna hate it after a while. You're carrying every day, you're just gonna be like, this is effing annoying. Um, so I, I got away from these things. So now we're going with the evolution, getting close to things that I actually like to carry. And we go to something like this. This is gonna be more comfortable, minus, so, minus this claw. Originally I didn't have the claw. I still carried at like three or four o'clock and it was just that. And it was more comfortable because it took up much less space on my belt. It was very simple, it was minimalist, and it just did its job and didn't get in the way. Like when I'm moving around and stuff, this stuff slides against your clothing. This like leather and this neoprene stuff and the rubber over here, that all catches on your clothing. Your underwear, your pants, your belt, your shirt, whatever it's touching, it's going to catch and bind and it's annoying as hell. This stuff, your thing's just going to slide right over it. Some things you will notice about holsters like this, if they are very form-fitted like this, you can literally see the outline of the 509. Mm -hmm. Parts like right here, right here, right here, these are going to be high pressure points, um, stuff like that. So what I have done before is I've taken the fluffy side of Velcro and I've just put it right here. That will soften it up much more. Put it like straight across like that. Money. It's really good. It's slick. That fiber is very slick so it's not going to bind but it also gives you a little bit of cushion for those hard edges. If you have something like this, this is for an HK45 and APLC. Look at how smooth that is. And this is something else that we're going to get into right now. Is if you add a light to your gun, it's going to increase the comfort, generally speaking. Most lights are flat on the side, so they turn something like this, which has some sharp edges, and it's a relatively thin pressure point, to something like this. You, like, you don't even realize this is on. Look, at it. it's just a big, fluffy cloud. <laughs> and, uh, and it's even white. There you go. All right, so now we're going to get into stuff that I currently carry. And as you'll see, they all have a little claw on the side. This is because I switched to appendix carry. Um, I can do, I mean, it would take a whole video to explain why I switched to appendix, appendix carry and what I think is better about it and whatever, but long story short is I have a sports car and holsters like these and having your gun at your three o'clock puts a dent in the bolster of your seat. So if you really like your car, uh, you're not going to want to carry like this in your car. You end up taking your gun off, putting it back on, annoying as shit. So that's, what, that's literally why I ended up appendix carrying at first. And then 
I got training and look, did a lot of research, educational stuff, and just learned all the benefits of it. This is the simplest version of an appendix carry holster. What makes them appendix carry holsters is this claw. That is the only difference between this and this, and it makes a world of difference. Trust me, if you try to appendix carry at something like this, you're going to hate it, you're going to think it sucks, and you're not going to see the point. As soon as you put a claw on, it pushes the butt of the gun in and turns the holster like that, and all of a sudden you can carry a gun that's twice as big, and it's totally concealable, totally comfortable. Uh, it's way better than being on your side as far as comfort and concealment is concerned. You'll notice this is a Vetter holster. Their appendix carry style, we can get this um, wing, sucks. Uh, I have gotten two of these and one of them was totally unusable and this one I had to modify and put third hole on the top here just so I could move the clip down far enough for this to even work. This has to be in line with the belt of your clip and then your belt goes like that, pushes against this and brings the butt of your gun into your side. If you don't have that, appendix carry is useless and so is this holster. So this holster was like 70 something dollars and I had to modify it for it to even work. So that sucks through them. Um, this T5 Custom Kydex, pretty cool company. Uh, this company has a lot of cool options. You can see there's like this two-tone awesome thing for the FN509. Now, a holster like this, it's designed properly so that your belt comes across and hits the uh, the wing, it has a light so it's going to be super comfortable and then it has this wedge which is rubbery, has kind of a soft padding, downside is as we said before rubber catches on clothing, this will catch on like your underwear and stuff a little bit. So that is one downside of this thing but it is soft, it is big and what this does is pushes the top of the gun into your, into your stomach, the wing pushes it like that so you get this double cant motion making you be able to conceal huge guns. This holds an FN 509 Tactical with an RMR and it is super comfortable, it is super minimalist and uh, looks pretty awesome. This company is very cool. They also make this rig right here which is generally what I carry. Generally, because if I'm going to carry this it's not any more cumbersome really to carry this. I, I kind of just got this for fun because <laughs> I liked the design. I don't know, I just thought it was pretty sweet. This holds an FN 509 tactical like I said, so I kind of feel like I'm in a tropical island with the aqua blue and tan and it's like a sandy beach in the Caribbean. Pretty awesome. So, I like aqua blue. Get over it. Uh, <laughs> So this is for an HK-45 and TLR-7, actually. He gives you a pretty decent cant, which helps this push against your stomach. If this is flat, you're going to get lots of printing. It needs to push against your stomach uh, very tightly when you have such a wide setup on the appendix carry position. Again, you have a wedge, pushes it in and like that, and then the cant is enough to keep the mag concealed. So the downside of an appendix holster like this is that it has a fixed cant and no matter how much you tighten your belt it's still going to look like that. So then we come in to the coup de gras of tier 1 concealment holsters that do not have a fixed cant. These two ends can bend however much your body demands them to while you're moving, however tight you want to put your belt stuff like that, uh, this can bend and that is huge. These are by far my favorite holsters uh, without question. They're super well made, they're super comfortable he has a lot of cool designs um, but mainly it's the function it's, it has a perfect claw very well made, very well positioned, absolutely perfect location, uh, good retention adjustments on this, and as you can see I can hold my 24 round FN509 tactical mag 
and it literally fits flush with the gun as well. And uh, this is the slim model, and this is much better than the regular Axis or the Aegis because the other ones just take up way too much room in your belt, and you end up, uh, your clips interfere with your actual belt loops, and it becomes a problem. Whereas the slim, you don't have that problem. Uh, it's, it's small enough where your gun fits perfectly in it and you don't have to worry about that crap. So, why I have this guy is because these guys T5 Custom Kydex will actually make you custom products. Whatever you want, they will order special Kydex colors, They'll do crazy combinations of guns and weapon lights, anything you could possibly imagine pretty much. This guy will work with you and make you a holster. No one would make me an HK45 compact holster um, in anything like this style holster. And especially with a custom fitted TLR7 to it, this guy emailed me, said, hey, dude, just send me a picture of where it fits, and I'll make one for you. And he made it work. He, like, such a great guy. Uh, the owner's awesome. He's easy to contact, and literally custom holsters. Most of these custom holster makers aren't actually custom holster makers. They give you options, and they just have an automated machine that cuts out a holster. So if they have the design, they will make it but they won't do anything customized, like truly customized. These guys will. Uh, his retention is a little bit worse. It's actually fixed. There's really no retention except for on the mag a little bit. But, um, and like I said, it doesn't bend. So there's some give and take here. Um, he will make whatever you want. He will make the coolest colors you can imagine, any way you imagine. So if you have like a non-run-of-the-mill gun, this guy, T5 Custom Kydex, badass. Uh, if you do have more of a run-on-the-mill gun, and these guys have uh, a color design and a holster um, that fits your gun and your light model, then this holster is just unbeatable because of the way that it can bend and how thin uh, the profile is. It's not super long. So, there's your rundown of the progression, the evolution of where I went with holsters. So I hope this helped you guys. This might save some people money, some people time. You know, these, these are my mistakes. Learning, progressing. There's huge downsides and it's good to know the downsides of each kind of design.